Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. I said YouTube weird. Welcome to my YouTube's, my YouTube's channel. My name is Alana and I review books. And today's book review is Beowulf. You know that that poem, that long epic poem that either that tends to scare people because there are some gnarly translations out there that are very dense. We're going to talk about that book. Uh, this poem. I've read this before. I read it in high school and hated it. Hated it. I didn't know what I was reading. But revisiting it as an adult with a better translation, it's a, it was a good read. Let's let's hide, hop right into this. I don't think this review should take me a whole lot of time, but I think there's some interesting things to discuss here. This is really not a long poem. This, this is thicker than it is, and my translation... This is the Seamus Haney translation, but it also is... is the bilingual edition. So we've got contemporary English here, as in Seamus's translation. And then we have the old, old, we have, uh, what is that? Old English, what is that? That's a lot, but it's, it's, it's parallel to what that is. I wish I could read it, but your girl can't, okay. They said that of all the th all the kings upon the earth, he was the man most gracious and fair-minded, kindest to his people and keenest to win fame. So in a nutshell, in Beowulf, we have the Danes who are being terrorized by Grendel, a monster that no one seems strong enough to defeat. Beowulf, the Scandinavian, comes to defeat said monster named Grendel. In a display of unparalleled strength and valor, because my guy Beowulf is just the best of the best, okay? He's just the best warrior. He not only defeats Grendel, he defeats Grendel's mama. Because Grendel's mama is upset that Beowulf done killed her baby. So she, she said, not my son. That's what you're not fit to do. But she got got, okay? So Beowulf got Grendel and his mama. But who got Beowulf, the dragon? And that is what it is in a nutshell several years later. Then Beowulf gets got by the dragon. He's older at that point, but it's an epic death. Let's, let's dive in. As a person who has spent a decent amount of time, so many credit hours studying the ancient Greek and Romans and their heroes and their warfare, the first thing that I personally noticed about Beowulf are the characteristics of the Danish slash Scandinavian hero, warrior, and ruler. Thus, Beowulf bore himself with valor. He was formidable in battle, yet behaved with honor and took no advantage. Never cut down a comrade who was drunk, kept his temper, and, warrior that he was, watched and controlled his God-sent strength and his outstanding natural powers. A warrior will sooner die than live a life of shame. For 50 years, I ruled this nation. No king of any neighboring clan would dare face me with the troops. None had the power to intimidate me. I took what came, cared for, and stood by things in my keeping. Never tormented quarrels, never swore to a lie. All this consoles me, doomed as I am, and sickening for death. Because of my right way, the ruler of mankind need never blame me when the breath leaves my body for murder of kinsmen. These are heroes and men in Beowulf that there, in which there is a strong emphasis on self-control and maintaining a moral and ethical high ground. Whereas there is a strong focus of the fallibility of the ancient Greek and Roman hero, especially the Greeks. Beowulf in particular seems beyond reproach. He is a man of self-control. He's strong. He's righteous. He is a symbol of perfection, of masculinity and chival chivalrousness. I, you can, and this is where you can see how we're getting that idea of a strong chivalrous knight that we have in the West. The charm of the ancient Greek heroes are their flaws. And here, the charm is this strong masculine level-headedness. This super, this strong sense of self-control. 
There is no hot-headed and arrogant Achilles here. Achilles, the, the, this Achilles in here, he would be considered, oh no, my guy, go sit down. Achilles would not, does not fit in this world. Odysseus doesn't fit in this world. Hector, they're too hot-headed. They don't have enough self-control. They don't have enough morality. They, they don't have enough ethics. Well, yeah, they're fabulous fighters, but they're too, they're too crude in a way. These, this is a different type of hero. There is also an emphasis on the morality of these men, like I said, from the very beginning of this poem, sorry, not morality, the mortality. From the beginning, very beginning, very, tech twister, from the very beginning of this poem, we know that Beowulf's death is inevitable. Death here is not something to fear. It is a fact of life. And what's important is that when your death comes, if you've lived an honorable life, you've had an honorable death. You will have an honorable death and your de you will be honored in death. But death is not easily escaped from by anyone. All of us souls, earth dwellers, and children of men must make our way to a destination already ordained where the body, after the banqueting, sleeps on its deathbed. O flower of warrior, beware of that trap. Choose, dear Beowulf, the better part, it eternal rewards. Do not give way to pride. For a brief while, your strength is in bloom, but it fades quickly. Like I said, this is my second read of Beowulf. And there is something this time around that I did not notice the first time around. While my 16-year-old self, 15, 16, however old I was, was loathing this poem. And I had no idea what was happening. <laughs> I, I can't remember what translation we read. I thought it was this, but it wasn't. Um, there are a lot of parallels in Beowulf to the book of Genesis in the Bible. Grendel and his mother are described as being descendants of Cain. And if you don't know, Cain is the son of, is a son of Adam and Eve who murdered his brother Abel out of jealousy. In Beowulf, all things evil or majority of the things that are evil are described as being descendants of Cain's line. So I interpreted this as honor, valor, moral and ethics are something that is a genetic characteristic or a gen genetic disposition based on your bloodline. Grendel is the descendant of a corrupt bloodline and thus behaves accordingly. Once, so we can almost assume that Beowulf, his, his ancestry is of noble, honorable ancestry. His ancestors were out here just murdering and killing just because. And other men as well that are described in this poem as being good men. They have noble bloodlines. Cain got no good from con committing that murder because the Almighty made him an, an athenema. And out of the curse of his exile, there sprang ogres and elves and evil phantoms and the giants too, who strove with God time and again until he gave them their reward. Grindel's mother, monstrous hell bride, brooded over wrong side note. <laughs> I don't ever want to be called a monstrous hell bride. Ouch. She had been forced down into fearful waters, the cold depths after Cain had killed his father's son, felled his own brother with a sword, branded an outlaw, sorry, branded an outlaw, marked by having murdered, removed into the wilds, shunned company and joy. And from Cain sprang misbegotten spirits, among them Grindel, the banished and accursed. Accursed. I'm going to wrap this up. I mean, Beowulf is not really a complicated plot. I mean, I know people, there are people who analyze these for days and they tie it into literature, uh, Western literature when it comes to fantasy and stuff, which is and fantasy and Tolkien was heavily influenced by this. I am going to touch on that briefly. So the main reason I actually decided to read Beowulf is because I had been, I've been adding more fantasy titles to my TBR and Beowulf, we see, is a framework for a lot of what we now have in modern history. So, or sorry, modern fantasy. So Tolkien was heavily inspired by Beowulf. It's very evident in The Hobbit. I just didn't know how evident because I hadn't read Beowulf in so long. Um, that whole premise of the dragon, Tolkien, that's where Tolkien got that from. It is, the parallels are just obvious. <laughs> um, and Tolkien does say that he was inspired by Beowulf. So we have the whole dragon scene in the hobbit when the dragons 
sitting on the, he's just his whole, you know, slew of gold, dwarfish gold that he's now hoarding in this, in this cave, in this mountain. That's the dragon and Beowulf. And, um, yes, but also in that whole fight, the whole fight that you get of in the Hobbit with the dragon, it's in Beowulf. But for me, and I might be reaching here, but I think it's really the atmosphere that this reminded me of Beowulf. The first time I read Game of Thrones back in 2014, the first book, the others were reminding me of something. And I specifically, talking about the very first chapter in the very first Game of Thrones book, reminded me of Beowulf. I was I didn't know why. I hadn't read Beowulf at that point in a long time, at least 10 years before reading Game of Thrones. And I just couldn't put my finger on it. And now I know why the atmosphere is there. I don't know if uh, Martin did this on purpose or it's just a coincidence, but I finally scratched that itch. I can close this this chapter in my life. <laughs> I can tr- I can close that door. There are descriptions in the atmosphere in Beowulf that remind me of Game of Thrones. That coldness, it's eerie. Things are lurking around that you can't see. This was what was in Beowulf. Young and old were hunted down by the dark death shadow who lurked and swooped in the cold nights on the misty moors. Nobody knows where these reavers from hell roam on tear er- on their errands. I mean, doesn't that sound like the others coming to get you? I think it does, but that's just me. So that's actually why I picked up Beowulf. I had to close that door and and figure out why it was reminding me of the others. (laughs) So yeah, I'm glad I decided to reread Beowulf this time around. I enjoyed it. It, it, I found this translation to be very readable and easy to understand. I wasn't confused at all. Also, this edition has in the margins little notes about what just happened so <clears throat> it's easy to follow along my voice is going excuse me <clears throat> my water is all the way over there but we're gonna roll with it i'll just have to sound like a frog um beowulf can be an intimidating text it just depends on the translation and if you were intimidated by beowulf i would recommend the seamus haney transition translation and then if you get on with that maybe go into some of the different translations um i got so much more out of this than i did when I was in high school and it just goes to show when sometimes you're forced to read something you're reading it for a curriculum and it, it may not be the right time for you to really appreciate that particular piece of literature I again it just goes to show that you got to read the book at the right time for you you know it kind of bothers me when people say oh I'm ashamed I haven't read this classic yet don't be ashamed the book will call to you when it's time you know, you'll just know read it when you're ready to read it not because you are trying to check something off your list and keep up with the joneses read it when you're ready to read it you're going to enjoy it a lot better um yeah i gave this a four to five i really enjoyed it i'm glad i have it on my shelf and as i read more fantasy i now have this percolating in the back of my mind have you read beowulf are you intimidated by beowulf were you like me had to read in high school didn't get on with it And maybe you're curious to revisit it. Let me know what you think. Please leave me a comment down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave me a comment. Please feel free to follow me on Instagram. My link is down below where I am up to more book of shenanigans. Um, I post all of my book reviews there first. I post what I'm reading for each month and what I've finished reading after the end of each month. I also like to post funny memes, funny videos. I throw some ballet videos in there from professionals that I like to watch and admire. So there's that. And I'm going to sign off. I'm going to get myself some water. My eh, my throat's dry. It's 1.30. 1.34 to be exact. It's time for lunch. I made a delicious beef stew. I'm going to have some of that with a French roll. No one does pastries and bread like the French. Okay? That's it. I'm out. <laughs>